November 2022, San Francisco-based company OpenAI released the artificial intelligence chatbot ChatGPT that can write entire essays, create reports, do administrative tasks, and a laundry list of other things. In August 2023, the University of Michigan became the first major educational institute to release its own artificial intelligence tools made specifically for students, faculty, and staff. VP of Information Technology and Chief Information Officer for U of M, Dr. Ravi Pensei, played a role in getting the AI tools so, created. U of M has uh, essentially uh, developed, partnered with vendor partners and introduced uh, three tools. One is called the UMGPT. UMGPT functions like OpenAI's ChatGPT, with the major difference being the data received and produced by UMGPT is kept private by the university. The second tool that we rolled out then was we made a code-less platform available to the entire campus community called Maisie. What uh, Maisie does is essentially anybody, no programming, coding experience required, can actually take the Maisie platform, point it to their appropriate data source. So if you have some data, say, in your Google Drive or Dropbox or on the web or you have a bunch of videos, you can point Maisie to it. And what Maisie will do is it will ingest and index all of that information and then it's available to you as your own personal AI assistant for you to query and ask questions. The third release from U of M is an AI toolkit that provides the resources and computing power for campus AI research and experts. UMGPT toolkit provides access to those researchers who are the AI experts who can then start building their own models. Because of the capabilities of the AI tools, educators across the country have concerns over potential plagiarism, cheating, and abuse by students. Currently, there is no software that can reliably tell if AI has been used in writing, image generation, audio, or video content, which means there's no way to definitively know if a student has used artificial intelligence in their work. So institutions like U of M had a choice to make. We had two ways of looking at it at Michigan. One way was we could just say, well, just step back and let's just wait out and see what the world will do and then maybe we can react. The other way was, you know, let's uh, thoughtfully approach this technology and let's lead. Faculty at the school had been thinking about how to integrate AI into their courses. David Jurgens is an associate professor in the School of Information's Department of Computer Science and taught a first-of-its-kind course called How to Use AI Effectively. I think as a university, we're trying to figure out how to get students to engage with this in a productive, collaborative way uh, without sort of losing their you know, critical thinking skills. So the course was designed to walk students through a bunch of different exercises on how to do that. and. We as an experimental course, we were learning how to do it as well as the students were at the same time. U of M student Shantasia King is majoring in user experience at U of M's School of Information. She took Jurgen's course. It was his class that kind of hit that light switch for me. Um, I started off, I could be a student, you know, just asking it to give me the answers, complete this homework for me, but you're not learning anything. Cutting corners will get you nowhere. But when you actually sit down and you can have it, you know, create um, test studies for you or create like study plans or study guides or if you're really stuck on something this can become your own personal tutor right here. I just kind of had to change my outlook towards chat GPT understanding that it's not the end all be all. It won't provide you exactly everything that you're looking for so you don't want your work to get lost in it so you have to work with it. Provide the context that you want to see and you would be really surprised at what you can work with it and get back. The way Shantasia is thinking about AI is what Jurgens was hoping his course would achieve. We teach them different ways to use that tool to be better versions of themselves, but not to replace themselves with AI. So I tell students, you, maybe you could get ideas for what to write about. You could ask ChatGPT questions on how to improve your draft. But to think about it like a teaching assistant, you can use it as a kind of always collaborative person who's awake any hour of the day, who could work with you to like help you and provide feedback and guidance on where it could be improved. Shantasia is seeing results outside of the classroom. So it really has opened the doors to a lot of things for me as a student as far as not even only academically, but when someone asks me to create your vision statement or show me what your future looks like or what does the business that you want to run look like, I happily go and talk to ChatGPT. I don't just ask it to tell me, I tell it what I want to see and then ask it to input its input. Artificial intelligence tools are also being developed to remove barriers to gaining access to higher education. Yearly, every year, about $4 billion in Pell Grants go unused. We are building a public Maisie, 
And what I mean by public Maisie would be something that would be publicly available to the entire country to use. And what this Maisie will do is it, is, it is actually ingesting and indexing all of the scholarships that are out there, not just Pelgrimage. This public version of Maisie would make it easier to find out what scholarships and grants a student is eligible for. You as a user, you will be able to type in your situation where you may say, I'm 17 year old, you know, high school student, I have this kind of GPA, I've done these things, and I'm interested in these areas. Can you identify for me some scholarships that are available? And then this system in probably 15 seconds will find you all of the relevant scholarships that you may have opportunity for. You know, uh, what I said to my team when I challenged them is I said, you know, even if 20 people are able to go to college because of this, it'll be worth it. As U of M's campus community and the public use these AI tools, the technology will continue to improve. But Dr. Pensei's optimism for the future rests more in people than artificial intelligence. You know, the young people are so wonderful and are so wanting each one of them to contribute something positive to the world. So I'm very confident that no matter what field they choose to uh, pursue, as long as they're passionate about it, the AI tools will be available and they can change the world for better. Watch One Detroit, Thursday at 7.30 p.m. You can find more at OneDetroitPBS.org or subscribe to our social media channels and sign up for our One Detroit newsletter.